Hey, 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 hey. All right, all right. Here we go again. Once again, we are getting ready to get one of the most dynamite weekends of boxing on and popping here on the fight show, the post fight show today with my co host, Haley. Welcome, Haley. It's good to Thank see you in the building. You. Thank you. Rocking out from New York City. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, how's that weather going on up there as uh, we you know, dive into these topics? Beautiful. We've had a lot of snow, a lot of snow, more than the past six years or so than I can remember. But it's, yeah. it's brutal. It's making me wish for warmer weather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, your your idea of beautiful and mine is two different things. I was kind of in really beautiful weather. And uh, I am feeling the faint right now. But to everybody who's out there watching, we are getting ready to get it popping with some of the great fight highlights and some conversation on the fight show. So once again, we welcome and without any further ado, it's time to box. <laughs> So the first thing I wanted to dive into is that Burchell fight yep. was lived up to every ounce of hype. Let me give a shout out. I see the people popping in. <laughs> I came to box. All right. That's what's up, champ. I can't wait. Good to box. Can't wait to <laughs> box. I see. Yeah. So the most insightful thing that I had to take away from that fight, uh, Valdez, first of all came in he looked really 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 sharp his confidence yeah. was was brimming you know it was kind of i could feel him channeling everything and kind of holding it in so as the fight was approaching Haley, I, I i i really thought about you know the things that really are important when it comes down to a, approaching a night like that and so what we always like to make sure everybody's clear on is there's a lot going on to try to throw you off your game and to see him before the fight. And as he composed himself before actually going into the ring, I was very impressed with that mm -hmm. because he's grown. Game. Yes, because right now he's acquired uh, Canelo's trainer to help him out with some things. And he put it all together last night, needless to say. So I have a small list of things that... Ooh. Uh, he actually had to do to basically overcome what was necessary and things that he carried out. So a couple of things, what my takeaway is, let me see what my man saying right here. Yeah. Valdez had an absolute, uh, that, that performance was second to none. You can't draw it up any better. It was a tough fight. He had to use his legs. And like I said, I was about to give the characteristics of what was necessary for him to get. What you saw when you saw that fight last night was spacing. He had to understand the proper space in which he operated. And he did that for the entire night. He never surrendered the area in the ring in which he was able to operate and the other guy wasn't. Mm -hmm. The next thing was the angles that he continually created. And when I say angles, I'm talking specifically about the manner in which he would take to the, whether it's in the corner, back against the ropes. Yeah. He would always wait till Bachet would get to a particular point and then he create the angle off of his defense. So he'd make a miss and create an angle and operate from that place. And that takes a lot to teach a guy to do that. So it shows me that he's working, doing some uh, immaculate drills to, to supersede and, and develop. But another, another craft that he used, which this isn't the typical Mexican style of boxing. This is the kind of boxing that guys like Mayweather and either Sweet Pea, Willie Pep got criticized for. But... <laughs> This is what I mean. Uh, it's a lot of bias in boxing, but it's okay because we're born in that way. So you have to learn and unlearn those characteristics. But one of the other techniques that he used, and Bernard Hopkins used to get really critiqued for this, is, is clinching. 
But yeah. like I said, in a masterful way, he would space first, create the angle second, and then once he would throw his punch, he'd tie up, turn, spin back out. That's smart boxing. If you got a bigger, stronger guy, like a guy like Burchell, and he's coming at you, pressuring you, he's strong, he's dense. That night of the fight, he's naturally eight to 12 natural pounds, probably even larger than that, maybe 16 pounds naturally bigger. Yeah, and he put on 16 pounds after the weigh-in. So he put on 16 pounds, so you can tell, you know that this dude is much larger. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, and I'll get to our audience as a, in a minute, because I see some good questions popping up and some statements. But when you see that, the first thing you have to keep in mind is that you have to take that advantage away from him. And you have to make him use, and you have to make him forget that he has that advantage. And you got to basically take away what that advantage brings. So that's what the clinching after the tying up and turning him creates. And, and people must understand it takes a lot to build a car. It takes a lot to build a rocket ship and it takes a lot to box. And when you, when you criticize a fighter, for using his wheels, using his engine, using the propane that goes into his gas tank, then you're discrediting the system in which boxing is built off of. Defense mechanisms were created so people could defend themselves against much more impactful oppositions. So that's what does it. And if you, like your uncle, would debilitate a guy with body shots, doesn't yeah. matter how big you are. You can't body shots hurt no matter what size you are. So, and he used timing and distance. Like I said, he kept the proper range. He clenched, he kept created the angles and what you call, what that's called is beautiful boxing. And he displayed it. So did you get Valdez, a chance to watch it? Yeah. He kept pretty close to the ground. You know, he stayed, he stayed in a lot. Center. He had a wide stance. Yeah. And I was watching his hips quite a bit. Yeah. How he was using them to his advantage. He'd square off and then go to the side. Mm -hmm. I think and that that grounded all the way to the canvas through his toes yeah. to his ankles all the way up. Yeah. Was, you know, get getting him a lot of that power that we saw. Oh yeah. Proper stance is super important. And when he would touch him, boom. You know, that that, yeah. <laughs> that he counts. always returned to that neutral yeah. position for him. That yeah. um that, that takes tight. he kept mm -hmm. it, yeah, he kept it up up high too. Yeah, right. and hands up high is a is a muscle memory, and that doesn't come easy. You hear these guys talking in social media when they crit, crit critiquing people and talk about oh he should keep his hands up. Like, do you understand how many other things you have to learn? And, uh, and it was a great guy guy who asked a question the other day, like, you know, how can I learn boxing when I'm watching online? If I'm watching, I said the same way you're looking at it. You're looking at a video right now. That's how you're learning. Uh, it's, it, 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 it categorizes everything for you. It, the benefit of doing it because it, it structures what you got to cover all the time. And if you don't have that, if you're just working out of your head, what you're going to miss is how to not miss the real fine details as those guys of old had to train under, because if you drop your hands at the wrong distance back then, guys were there to strike. Those were pioneers. That's the difference between today and then mm -hmm. is the pioneers will hit you really as soon as they see them opportunities. The day today, to, today guys pose so much more. So they don't understand how to do it, but hands up. That's a skill set. That's an acquired tech tactical technique and, and it doesn't come effect. easy yeah it doesn't. It, doesn't, it doesn't come easy people think uh the weight for check game could have been a big part of two large pieces <laughs> yeah on the right before the fight yeah but yeah well that won't 16 pounds you know it's probably a good pound and a half though i'm not sure if he ate the entire two pieces himself did you or he Go did ahead. you see the photo? Did you watch the weigh-in or did you see the photo of him? I saw. He was cut. Mm -hmm. he, I mean, abs that I've never seen another fighter have abs in yeah. place before. Yeah. But then he looked just 
normal healthy the next day is that all water weight what is that it was water it's a lot of water you how just, is that healthy well let me tell you how you have to go about um draining the body uh when you're doing water weight every, so you take in like a gallon of water in a day and throughout that day you excoriate you know whether it's saliva <laughs> you know urine eating uh, all of these things to extract it. So you got to drink a lot and it just flushes your body and you put on the sweatsuit and get it. So you extract it out and it takes other water with it. So all you're doing is just a constant deficit. You're just crying. And that's why you see the sunken eyes because a lot of fighters are malnutrition. That's why we have uh, the method for them to really do it the right way, Haley. Um, that's great. I think, yeah. I think more and more boxers need to know about that. You're talking yeah. about like, where the bags under their eyes look like yeah. uh, blue, kind of. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not it's good. Sunk, sunk in here. Mm -hmm. And there's a point where it's called malnutrition, not dehydrating, not cutting weight. It's, and that's where you see uh, in the UFC, a lot of guys, are they go to the hospital. They, they're medically set up to fail physically in their health. So, And it's just because they just don't know better. And um, mm -hmm. so the next thing was... You know, how do you take upon a guy who's a banger like that? So I'll explain that because uh, I see a lot of questions popping up. So I'm going to pop them in. Yeah, I've got. Um, let's see. The weight Barchelt gained could have been. A, oh, we said that already from the pizza. Um, yes. The one on the screen. Can you see the screen? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Hats off to his coaches that made in fight adjustments to maintain the upper hand throughout each rounds. As for Valdez to follow the game plan. Switching to southpaw, I noticed that off and oh, on yeah. throughout the later rounds was the wrinkle that helped Val Valdez maintain his edge throughout the later rounds. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he pulled out a lot of different wrinkles, and that is a wrinkle. And it's not something he was known for doing a lot of, but he utilized it last night because he needed it all. And he needed all the conditioning that it would have taken to carry that, that mission out. And so good, um, Kador, Mr. Kador, uh, that was a very good and well um, laid out statement. It was and very good knowledge in catching that because the way he was operating was not just to get in there and to, you know, throw the punches and survive, but to keep it awkward for Burchett. And he did that and continued to change the looks, which is hard for a puncher because they need their feet set then the number one thing to how do you on the bottom of the screen everyone keep your eyes here because questions will pop up but how do you defeat a banger and which is Burchell is a banger you never let him plant his feet and so when speaking to this Mr. Kador saying that he noticed that the South Paul switching. So that takes away the, that takes away the, the jab for the most part and the, the, the range finders. Now you got to find the angle in which you're going to throw your punch because he switched targets. That's difficult. It's like working in the mirror because if you make a mistake and I noticed that um, Valdez also would throw out of that stance as well. So he wasn't just switching to make the look awkward. He was switching to land shots and spin out. So he was doing a great job, man. It was a master class in boxing. It was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was a it was a it was a piece that should should be acknowledged. And he Can we he, talk he, about that fourth round? Oh yeah. Wow. You got that on your agenda? <laughs> the fourth round when he dropped him the first time? Yeah. And, yeah. And, I mean he took he took a lot. He uh, took a lot of punches. And what I was gonna do is I saw a few people posting about just the way he was taking shots. I saw uh, Terrence Crawford make a comment about how he's taking these punches. And I think when you see a guy, that was that act extra weight too. So when you got that weight packed on, it allows you to take punches if you got a good chin. Now, if you just don't have a good chin, yeah. but you can tell his neck was heavy. You know, his, his he was just dense with mass. And for all cases, it doesn't work like that. But if you're a superior athlete, which he's a supreme athlete, he took punches straight to the face. And believe me, Valdez felt them 
when he was throwing and landing, like this dude is taking some hard shots. Mm -hmm. He was catching them on a point of the chin. I mean, flush to the cheeks. I mean, the the. I've never yeah. seen anyone be able to take that much in yeah. such a like so early on in the fight. Yeah, I thought the ref was gonna call it because I didn't think I didn't think he could come back from that, you know. And he, oh, right. he didn't really. No, no, no. But he he put on a valiant effort after the fact. But one of the things that I wanted to bring into highlight is in a key word that I use all the time is and I'm going to put it up here on the screen so everybody can see it. And let me see. So it's keyword why this matters. Yeah. And that's muscle memory. And when you utilize muscle memory in a situation like that, this is why I, I, I have groomed the school of boxing uh, coaches to develop their athletes in a systematic, redundant way by the keys and principles of boxing. Because when you get hit like that, your, your brain is gone. You're, you're out of sorts. So what happens is whenever the muscles have to drive the bus themselves, they can only do what you've done over and over and over again. And so basically it goes on autopilot. Like when you get knocked out, your, your your respiratory system takes over and you can just watch the, the, the lungs work on their own. That's what has to happen when you get concussed in a fight like Bertet did. He, the muscle memory took over even when his legs were going and he was still throwing shots out of mind. He would never f remember the, that entire night. He'll probably start to remember late when they get like when they're getting ready to go to the hospital, those moments might flash back. He'll forget the entire night. Tyson tell says it too. He'll tell you when he fought Lennox or it was no Holyfield. And he just said, you know, it's, it's I don't remember after the third round. Like they fought 11 rounds. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like That's it's gone. Yeah. Hey, you're never getting that back, you know? Yeah. And to be that, and I'm going to take some some more statements. I see guys dropping in. But when you see that, that's why you, I teach my guys to teach their guys to be redundant. So if you get hurt, boom, boom, like you can still counter and knock someone out because the muscle memory. That's why this word is king. Mm -hmm. And these are people don't love the drills that you have to do all the time. And I call for them all the time. But I say, hate me now, love me later. Because mm -hmm. you're going to thank me. <laughs> it, it's also kind of like jogging or riding a bike or driving a car where you're you're oh. used to the rhythm. You're, yeah. you're paying attention. But if mm -hmm. you've got something on your mind and you, you're thinking off track of what, what's around you, yeah. you're still like in control. You're yep. still watching out for yourself. Riding Absolutely. Bike, jogging, whatever, even yeah. though your mind can kind of go somewhere else. And, oh, and yeah. a lot of times it sounds like, in, especially in boxing, the brain is there to, it's trying to protect itself. Yeah. That's it's trying to remembering. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Special shouts out to coach Stephen Willis out in Canada, Willett Boxing Club, Hawksbury in the building. Shouts out, brother. Good to see you in the house. Hope you enjoyed the fights last night. There were some absolute stunners. It was a good night of boxing, man. Was. Welcome aboard. Special shouts out to my man from Freeport, New York, Thomas Himmelberg. Coach Thomas, I hope everybody's doing good out there. I hope you survived that storm real good. <laughs> I know it was crazy. Uh, Coach, uh, he, he went out there and he was working out there doing his boxing out in the snow. So special shouts out to you, brother. It's good to see you always. And um, oh, where we go? Where is that at from? Victoria, is that, is that, uh, Australia? Paul Harbor. Yeah. Hey, that Paul, like that's my guy. He the one that got George, um, Cambos has got me. Uh, uh oh, yeah. Nice. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> man. But, um, we're going to get into some great stuff, man. With some, with some Twitter talk, uh, it's going to be this little segment that we do, but as I do this, we're going to speak to, like I said, I, in the comments, I have it as this was arguably already the knockout of the year. 
without us having to say it, it's, it's, <laughs> I mean, you don't usually get the hype of a fight and then the hype delivers the fight delivers on the hype, but man, did this fight deliver on the hype? So it was nonstop action. That fourth round was absolutely insurmountable. And the fact that he was able to survive me, I'm thinking about my fighter when she are concussed, but by the sixth, seventh round, he started to look dangerous again. So Valdez had to really get on his bicycle. So as we talk about these things, I'm just so glad I have this platform for these teaching moments. And I hope guys are taking special note because it's so different when you're really doing it. And if you're in an amateurs guys and you're working with your fighters and you're not, you're, you're, you're trying to do too many different things. You better realize this one moment in that fight, at any given time, your fighter could get so buzzed and concussed. And if you have not drilled those necessary drills in there enough, he will be victimized. He will not be able to survive what's coming upon him. And that wrath is not something you want to test with your fighters. It's just not. Mm -hmm. It's not worth it. And our defense of prowess Tuesday is focused defense, defense, encountering. You know, so what happens when the punches come on to you, you stop them and then you take away what that person is doing by countering them, letting them know that there's a receipt for what you are doing. So if you want to keep getting the smoke, you keep throwing that shot. And that's a big thing. So I and hope all it's known is having one of the eighth worst defenses in the sport of boxing. <laughs> Did you hear him say that? He is. It's, it's, it's needless to say, he ate a lot of different kinds of punches, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Defense. Mm -mm. I know. But I, I take that with a great assault. And as you say, that gives him a, a lesson, uh, something to learn in. Can you get that for me there, Haley? That's my man, Thomas. Yeah. Tom asks, um, some have suggested his corner should have thrown in the towel in the last round when he seemed to have no legs. Absolutely. You always got to have people who have your back. Great, great um, comment there to Coach Thomas Him Himmelberg. But the thing about it is everybody's trying for that last lucky punch. They right. want, you know, the coach's ego is as big as the fighters. You know, he wants to go back and, you know, with his chest out in the air and shoulders back and be recognized as one of the top guys with the top guy. But the tr the fact of the matter is this isn't about the coach and it's not about the coach at all. And that when it comes down to the fight happening, it's about the coach when the coach is at home writing the programs. But and it's about the fighter when he's actually in combat. You know, it's at the gym sparring, doing smokers, doing exhibitions. Anytime he's gloved up, throwing at somebody and somebody's throwing at him, it's about him 100 percent. You have to take ego out of the out of the playing field. And you have to make sure an, another thing that is front and center, that you know your fighter and you do not have them in a place that you're not comfortable with them being in. And sometimes it's, it's, it could happen by chance. Like he gets clipped and you're like, he'll survive. He understands. But as I talk about survival plans, I was just out in Boca Raton, Florida, and I left our artist sparring book with coach Daya Davis, which is, uh, coach of Dustin Poirier's and you guys know uh, put the video up and I said now this will this is circumstitutional stuff so in order to survive your coach has to groom you for survival when you get these guys these coaches working with these guys who got power they're just like oh we got power and the, that's the first thing I'm gonna say that's that's the dude that's gonna lose because he's not concentrating on real true science of boxing and so that's what ended up happening. So here's another one. Coach McDonald, welcome. Special shouts out mm -hmm. to you. And this is another TSOB brother in the building, Stephen Thomas. Good to see you. It's good to see you, man. I hope you enjoyed the fights as well, mate. And 
when you see this all happening and unfolding, Haley, it's just about coaches that are uneducated. And I have a big job. I have a lot to do. There are a lot of people that are not even accustomed to having a place to get the answers from. And because in the boxing community, this is what we're used to doing. Uh, uh, these are my <laughs> secrets. Our coach gave us these. And excoriating what's new, what's what's necessary. But they all behind closed doors are like, man, thank you. Like, because this is a place that you, we don't have. You know, USA Boxing can only do what they do. They got tons and tons of content. The thing about it is there's no Pied Piper like myself drawing the students, which are the trainers, to them to have these constant things that they can continue to grow. And you got people who are grown in the system, homegrown, and it's just not fair. You know, and it's only how the sport gets better, because I really do believe we're in the future of boxing right now. We've mm. got this whole new generation, especially with Valdez, Teofimo, like we are we're in the future. We're totally here. We're totally in the next 15 years right now. So yeah. we got to take that with a grain of salt and we got to take it and, and really move on into learning that there are so many other different wrinkles that has to be taken upon. Now, as that that fight ended at the bell of the 10th round. Yeah. Did you see that knockout? And that was a knockout of a man on quiz street. He was his, he was out on his feet already. And hence is why he didn't have proper defense in place. And he was throwing for the fences and he left himself wide open, a nice sidestep turn hook pivot and good night, sweet Prince. What it did is make me realize this with that guy that he has a very good upside and a lot of people in that lane, in that weight class that he'll be able to get in, get in bed with and get some work. And it's just going to be absolutely insane how much action we got coming in 2021 in boxing. So um, as I segue off of that topic, like yeah. I said, we, we have a lot to unpack and I have to keep conscious. So for you guys who are dropping comments, let me see a couple of other comments. I saw some stuff. When, grab that for me, Halo. Uh, yeah, Barnabas says you are absolutely correct. He did use the southpaw stance to create different angles for his devastating hooks. Yeah. That lead jab was his bread and butter all night long, whether orthodox or southpaw stance. And that set up his hooks all night. Mr. Couture, you're, you're absolutely right. It was a beautiful rendition. Yeah, it was a beautiful rendition of boxing. Yes. Special shouts out to the Brochelle team for bringing their guy. And it's an experience that now you'll know, maybe I need to stop the fight earlier. And that was my point earlier. You have to have people around you with experience so they can see that deer in headlight look. Even if the guy wants to go, he's a fighter. That's what he's built to do. But you have to protect him so he'll have and be able to fight another day because that kind of knockout is not the kind of knockout you just your body forgets. And mm -hmm. so that takes 10 years off of your career. And with that being said, that battle was great. And special shouts out to the um, Valdez, the Valdez. They did an admirable job in the corner and keeping him just locked in. And he just performed like a, a ice skater. You know, it was beautiful. So what you got for us, Haley, with the news? Uh, well, I do want to shout out to Iran the Blade Barkley, who is back in the hospital. Um, he had a stroke in October, a mild stroke. And um, he's just been struggling. He was out of the hospital. Now he's back in with pneumonia. So oh. please, please give us extra love and light and prayers and he, you know the champ needs your strength yeah. support um i ran barkley if you could shout Abs out to him or absolutely and and that you said that um i reached out to um mrs uh, brenda Spink? yes oh, brenda good. Spinks. so i am going to we are going to connect on the phone and and chop it up and um we're gonna do some things so keep you in the loop with that she'll love that she'll love yeah that. um iran is married to pamela who's a nurse so he's, mm -hmm. he's got he's got a good woman in his corner which is well, I'll, I'll definitely um just make sure i get her number 
get her yeah. um just her Facebook, whatever. I'll get I get to people, man. Cause we gotta keep this thing. Yeah, you exactly. Know, yeah, we gotta build a oneness and then we gotta build a power unit. And so that's what we're gonna do. So in um, um, the world of progress, yes. uh, the fights that we saw last week on, on ESPN uh, at mm-hmm. the MGM Grand, yes. Um, yes. Al Heyman said, I'm sorry, um, what's his name? Not Al Heyman. Um, the other guy. <laughs> the, old, old, the old guy. Oh, um, Sam. Is that it? Yes. Yeah. Um, he said that there's no more fights in the bubble. No, they're now going to have an actual. People. Uh, People yeah. there. Yeah, I thought I caught a win, but go ahead. Yeah, finish. Yep. Yeah, so that's exciting. That's big. It shows a little bit of progress. You know, uh, Texas and Florida, they've been able to have open arenas. um, Oh. And now Vegas, with COVID getting a little bit better, Vegas is going to, you know, pop the bubble and let uh, let us come in. So that's exciting. Yeah, and I think what will happen is, you know, that it'll, it'll, it'll happen, and then they'll have a kickback, and they'll have to pull back, but you're one step closer to, walking in the direction of some normalcy, our new yeah. normal and the vaccines are happening. So uh, just stay safe. If you got the vaccine or not, keep the mask on. When I was in Florida, you know, we had a plenty of social distancing because oh, there's good. so much space, right. you know, you got beaches and everything, but the wind's blowing. It's just, it's different. And it's warm down there. People aren't right like getting sick so it's not a lot of viruses happening directly like when it's winter time it's cold you're getting flus people getting sick it's germs it's crazy but uh with that being said it's a beautiful thing to know that patience is virtue and with that comes progression and then when you get to that point once you get to that stage you start to see the light at the end of the tunnel the fact that we have sports going on i don't take it lightly i don't take it lightly at all because at any moment, you know, it could all be whisked away from us. And that reality that we had in 20, 2020, March 17th, it's still happening, right? <laughs> That's a reality, you, you know. So it lets you know, if you never thought about it, stay ready. So you don't have to get ready, mm-hmm. period. Sure. So we're going to have some really good things going into anything else on the, on the beat. Yeah, well, we've got the Canelo fight coming up next weekend. Dang. I am I am so psyched. Yeah. This is gonna be historical. Yeah, good. I'm trying it's, to unify those belts. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting. As I looked at um a couple of things that with Canelo and this segment right here is specifically about next week, how we will plan to do another show. So what I am going to do is Thursday we have a show. And the show will be with Lynn Lee, who is CEO of Society Nine, which she makes apparel, you know, for females, boxing gloves. She's uh, she was in Forbes top 30 under 30. I mean, she's global powerhouse in the game. Like anything you see, like on HBO and and people got gloves on boxing gloves and apparel. Is a very good chance they're theirs. Even when you see people training like Clarissa and, and over at Amanda Nunez in the UFC, you see her stuff everywhere. Lynn Lee is the deal. So she'll be on the show on Thursday. We're going to get it popping with that Canelo fight. It's going to be off the hook. Now, the special thing that I have to let the people know that we're going to do is we're going to have a bunch of some trivia once again, and people <laughs> will have an opportunity to win in stage, in house. We're going to shoot the fight show live stream in studio. Yeah. Those people get to come in and watch the fight down here, at Haley, where we hang. It won't go on social media, but Thursday, on our fight show, we're going to have trivia. And so for those who win, we're going to have 10 winners, 10 winners, and they'll all get to come and rock it with Master Boxing. And it's and you also win cash prizes once again. That's I awesome. think, yeah, it's going to be super fun. And I felt like there's a way now. Do not get it twisted. The whole card will be on. 
I'm not commentating anything but the main event. I will be there talking some while it's rocking. I don't want to interfere with the telecast. It's just going to be off the chain. I think everybody will have some new form of normalcy and a place where they feel like that they really getting some when they watch in boxing right here on the fight show live. <laughs> word and so that's what we're gonna do so make sure everybody you guys tune in because that is going to be ready and have your box and trivia hats on because you want to win the opportunity to be in set on set and uh i'm excited about doing that for everybody that's what's so up awesome. halo yeah i'm excited for your guests too yeah it's gonna be fun well there's some phenomenal women in boxing yeah you know? It is. It is. Uh, Lynn Lee. So you pull her up and go to YouTube, go whatever, man. She don't yeah. even, she, you know, her team works for social media. She's she's shoulders above. The fact that we were able to get her on is only because she 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 she, she like family to us as as a business associate, uh, uh, someone that you bounce ideas off of with, and she's just a heck of a person. She has an amazing team, or I mean, a powerful team of just amazing women. Just everywhere you look, man, they're just kick butt type chicks. You That's, know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> she winning. She's winning. She shows winning. you. Yeah, she shows you by example what winning looks like when you operate with no fear. That's it, man. She's the J-Lo of, of combat apparel. And her gear, like her gear is crazy. Like you definitely want to get some of that to work out in Society 9. Can't miss it, man. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody out there. Until next time, be blessed at Godspeed. We out.